What's going on, guys? Welcome to Inside the Horseshoe Podcast. My name is Matt, and tomorrow night is the NFL Draft, which means tomorrow night we're going to finally find out who the next quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts will be. It's going to be very exciting. I can't wait. All the arguments will be done after tomorrow. It's going to be really, really fun. I can't wait. And I figured since we are a day away from the draft, I would release my final mock draft. And it's going to be all seven rounds, no trades. Just want to make that clear. No trades at all, even though I think there will be trades. Uh, No trades, but it is all seven rounds. And this is how I currently feel. This is how I feel about the quarterback situation and just the players that they're going to take. So I'm very excited. I can't wait to get into it. But before I do, if you're new, Or if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate if you would click that subscribe button. Also, click the bell icon so you're notified when I upload a video or when I go live. If you like this video, smack that like button. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree with my mock draft? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have a Twitter, make sure you follow me on Twitter at horseshoe underscore pod. There is a link in the description down below. So that being said, let's get into the mock draft. And we're going to start off. With the fourth overall pick. It's going to be a quarterback. But what quarterback is it going to be? Is it going to be Will Levis? Is it going to be Anthony Richardson? Will CJ Stroud be available at four? Or will the biggest surprise of the night happen? Where Bryce Young falls from one all the way down to four. Well, I believe Bryce Young will be the first overall pick. That's how I feel personally. And I know some people think Will Levis will be the second pick, right? Because there's a lot of the betting sites that that have Will Levis as the number two overall pick. I think the second overall pick will be C.J. Stroud. If I'm going to be completely honest, I believe Stroud will be the second overall pick, which means their choices will be between Richardson and Levis. I believe, despite what everybody's saying, the big surprise will be Arizona stays at three and takes Will Anderson. I think the only way they trade is if the Colts offer them a deal that they're willing to accept. If that happens, then yes, Arizona will trade and take Will Anderson. However, I don't think they're going to trade back with Tennessee. I don't think they're going to trade back with Atlanta. I I just don't see them doing any of that at all. I think they stay put at three and they take Will Anderson. So now we're going to move on to pick four. Who do the Colts take, right? At this moment, I believe that the Indianapolis Colts will select Anthony Richardson from Florida. Now, a lot of people are going to argue. A lot of people are going to argue. And even after the draft, people will say, well, they should have took this guy. No, they should have took this guy. No, they took the right guy. You're going to see arguments all offseason, right? Just about different things. Um, To me, I think they're going to go with traits. I know some people think they won't go Richardson because Chris Ballard is on the hot seat. And if they have another bad year, Ballard is gone. Ballard is staying. They're going to keep everybody, but maybe one or two people. Uh, The reason why I say that is because Jim Irsay knows that next year is probably not going to be good because they'll have a rookie at quarterback and there's going to be struggles. So there's a good chance that if they do end up with Richardson or Levis, it's not going to be that good of a year. So I think everybody's job is safe. However, the following year, that's where everybody's, uh, or at least Ballard's seat is warm. Um, I think Steichen's got another couple years before he potentially gets fired if things don't go the way that they should. But I do think to go with Richardson, obviously the most athletic quarterback in this class. You could say he's the most athletic quarterback of all time. You could say that too, and I won't argue with you on that. But with Richardson, if this front office supports him, gives him a good offensive line, gives him some weapons to go to, right? And if this coaching staff can develop him the way he needs to be developed, and I don't think he's as far off as some people think. I do think he's a little closer to being what you need him to be. But if they can develop him as a passer to where he needs to be, and this organization supports him, with a good offensive line and weapons. He's going to be really, really good. He's going to be a really good quarterback, and he's going to be a dangerous quarterback. So I have them going Richardson at four. Now let's go to 35. This one was tough, right? 
Do I go receiver like a Josh Downs or a Zay Flowers? Do I go with a offensive lineman like Osiris Torrance or Cody Mouch or um, is it John Michael Schultz from Minnesota, the center? Do I go with that or do I go with corner? Well, I went with corner. And what corner did I go with? I have them selecting Julius Brents from Kansas State. Now, he's an Indiana native from Warren Central High School. So I know a lot of people in the area are going to be really excited to see that. Uh, he's big, he's tall, he's athletic, and he has really good speed. That's what you look for in a corner in this day and age. You want corners that are big. You want corners that are long. You want corners that are fast and athletic. That's what you're looking for today. And Julius Brents fits exactly what a lot of teams are looking for at the cornerback position. Um, again, has the speed to keep up with most receivers, maybe even all receivers. He also has really good hands. So he could pick it off pretty easily if you throw it to him. Um, you know, I think personally he could be a really good option to replace Stefan Gilmore. I think that could be the case. He's not going to be as good as Gilmore right away, but I do think in time he could be as good of a fit for this defense as Gilmore was. And he also has, uh, he's a good tackler, I should say. He's also a really good tackler, which is good. Uh, he's good in zone. He's good in man. Again, he's what you're looking for in a corner, so I have the Colts selecting him at 35. Now let's move on to 79. I went receiver here. I went with giving Richardson another weapon here. And to me, I have them selecting Jonathan Mingo from Ole Miss. Uh, very athletic receiver. He ran a 4.46 40-yard dash, so he is quite fast. Um, has a really good hand, so he's going to be able to catch those really difficult passes. So if he has to reach really far to catch a ball, he's going to be able to do that, and he'll do it successfully. Uh, he can be a deep threat for Richardson, and I think this team needs another deep threat another deep option, so that's obviously a good thing. And he's also a good blocking receiver, which is something this team is missing. Uh, we got rid of Zach Pascal last year. We didn't re-sign him, and he was a really good blocker, and we definitely missed that last year. So I think Jonathan Mingo would be a good replacement, a good um, option for that as well. So I have them going Jonathan Mingo here. Uh, I think he would be a very, very good option for Anthony Richardson. He has that big cannon of an arm you can throw it down to uh mingo so i'm gonna go with mingo at 79 now let's go with 106 to me at 106 i'm gonna go with dorian williams linebacker um i think we're gonna need to add another linebacker to this group i i don't think it's a bad idea to add another one you lost okarake so i think it'd be good to add some depth to this group and plus when it comes to shaquille leonard you just don't know. We don't know when he's going to play. I don't think he's going to retire like some people think. But still, there might be games where he'll be out. And if that's the case, I think you need to have another linebacker that can come in when you need him to. And to me, that's Dorian Williams. Um, has really good speed for a linebacker. Ran a 4.48 40-yard dash, which is good. It's, it's quite good. Uh, he's good in the pass coverage. So that's obviously good especially in the AFC when you got quarterbacks like Mahomes and Allen and Aaron Rodgers and you have all these really talented you know quarterbacks Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. So it would be good to add some talented pass coverage linebackers and that is Dorian Williams for sure. He's also a really good tackler, which is good. The one thing he could improve in is the run game. That's something he definitely can improve on. However, I'm not worried about that as long as he's really good against the pass game that's what I'm more concerned about in the AFC if we were in the NFC different story we're in the AFC that's where the best quarterbacks go to play you need to have guys that are good against the pass so I went with Dorian Williams at 106 so now we're gonna move on to 138 um he could be taken prior but I did go with an offensive lineman here uh Chandler Zavala I believe that's how you say his last name from NC State um He's somebody that I believe can compete with Will Fries for that starting right guard spot. So that's good. He's an athletic guy, allowed zero sacks at NC State this year, which is obviously a good thing. He's a good pass blocker, obviously. Also a pretty good run blocker, too, if I'm not mistaken. So I went with adding another offensive lineman. 
specifically at guard, I think that's where you need to address because, yeah, Will Fries is pretty solid, but I don't think he should be the guarantee starting right guard. So I went with another guy that could definitely compete with him and possibly even start over him. So that's why I went with Chandler Zabala, offensive guard from NC State. So now we're going to move on to 162. This is round five, um, just like 138 was. And I went with Yaya Diaby from Louisville. Um, he's a very athletic edge, which is good. It'd be a nice addition to the group. He ran a 4.5140 yard dash. Pretty good for uh, an edge. So that's good. He had nine sacks at Louisville too, which is nice. Um, and look, man, you need to add some dudes on that defensive line that can get to the quarterback with the conference that we're in. So I think Yaya Diaby could be a good guy that you can rotate in there and, you know, have him come in for whether it's Dio or it's Quiddy. I think he'd be a really good option. So I went with Yaya Diaby with the 162nd pick. So now we're going to move on to the 169th pick. And I went with another corner here, just like I did in the last mock draft, Jacorian Bennett from Maryland, I believe, corner. Um, not a bad idea to add an additional corner. Like I said, I think we need to add two more corners, whether you add one in the draft and one in free agency, or you add two in the draft. I think it's good to add a couple corners in this uh, corner group. So I went with Jacorian Bennett here. He's very athletic. He's a fast, fast, fast corner. 4.3 40-yard dash. That is insane. Absolutely insane. So he can keep up with every receiver. He's going to need to develop for sure before he becomes a guy he can throw out there on a uh, daily basis. But Jacorian Bennett is a guy that Brian Mason would love in that special teams group. He would love Jacorian Bennett. So I went Jacorian Bennett with the 169th pick. And now we're going to move on to round seven. This was tough. But I did decide to add another linebacker here. And I went with Yasser Abdullah. Uh, I believe is how you say his name. Yasser Abdullah. Again, adds more depth to the linebacker group, which is a good thing. He can also play on the line, which is good. He's a uh, he's another athletic linebacker. Again, put him on that line. He can come off the edge. Very good. Ran a 4.47 40-yard dash. Uh, had very solid numbers at Louisville, had 63 total tackles this year, nine and a half sacks, and four forced fumbles. This is a dude that if he's available in round seven and you're picking, this is a guy you add to your team. So Yasser Abdullah is who I went with pick 221. And now we're going to move on to the final pick of the draft, 236. This was pretty difficult. Who would I add here? I went defensive line. Uh, Levi Bell from Texas State is who I went with this. Uh, adds more depth to the line, which is good. He's an athletic player. Uh, you can put him in every now and again, which is good. Um, pretty good year at Texas State with six sacks, 13 quarterback hits, and 22 quarterback hurries. Pretty good. Pretty good if you ask me. He's really good against the run as well, which is really beneficial, um, especially when you have Derrick Henry to go up against. And you're going to be playing some good running backs as well, like Nick Chubb. So it would be good to add some guys that can go up against the run and do good things. So he's somebody that can do that, and he ran a 4.940 yard dash, which is pretty impressive for defensive line. So with the final pick of my mock draft, Levi Bell from Texas State it's who I went with. And that's going to do it. Let's run through the mock draft one more time, shall we? Uh, so a pick four, Anthony Richardson, 35, Julius Brent, 79, John Domingo, 106, Dorian Williams, 138, Chandler Savala, 162, Yaya, Yaya Diaby, uh, 169, Jacorian Bennett, 221, Yasser Abdullah, and then 236, Levi Bell. And that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new or if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate if you would click that subscribe button. Also click the bell icon so you're notified when I upload a video or when I go live. If you like this video, smack that like button. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree with my mock draft? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And if you have Twitter, make sure you follow me on Twitter at horseshoe underscore pod. There's a link in the description down below. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Matt. Bleed Bloon. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you watch one of these other two videos. They're cool. Also, if you're new, please click subscribe button as well as the bell icon. I greatly appreciate your support.